Macular degeneration is like a many, many of the bumps in the road that we deal with throughout life, and it's all about finding a new way to do tasks that you thought might be impossible. So let me start by talking about sort of humanity in general, or basically the evolution of human beings, and talk about a fairly uh, obvious glare in the makeup of a human being that leaves us with a really large visual deficit, and talk about some of the ways that we've learned how to adapt to that. And when I talk about the human condition, I talk about evolution, we need to think about the human being relative to other animals in the animal kingdom. Uh, if you take a look at a horse, for instance, or a cow, you may notice that the eyes of a cow or a horse are on the side of their head. And there's many animals that have eyes on the side of their head. And with the way each eye has about 180 degrees worth of vision, and if you put one on each side, uh, many animals can see 360 degrees. And other animals are, sp are particularly adapted, like an owl, uh, even though their eyes are more centrally focused, that the owl can turn their head 360 degrees. So, so an, an animal that can see vision, see, uh, vision, has vision virtually all the way around them, has a distinct advantage relative to uh, surviving in this world. So the early uh, uh, hunters and gatherers of the humankind I uh, always had a problem when they went out hunting, because if you went out hunting by yourself and you were hunting, let's say, a pack of lions, lions being a very smart animal, would notice that you couldn't see behind you. So they would put out a decoy, and the other, uh, other lions would circle around behind you, and just as about the time you thought you were going to pounce on the lion, they pounced on you from behind. So uh, this was a unique visual problem, a low vision problem, if you will, for the human race. How do we survive? Everyone, every time we send a hunter out, he, you know, he becomes the meal instead of uh, bringing home the bacon. So what they, uh, the adaptation, the, the finding a new way that was done by our, our early ancestors was say, you know, if we hunt in packs and we have a, a someone in our group that's always looking behind us, then we're not going to have uh, these other animals sneak up on us. Uh, so that tactic and the, and the human uh, species evolved due to the fact that they learned how to work in packs and have somebody compensate for those who couldn't see uh, behind them. And so you had a front man and you had a, a rear man. Now, if you take a look at how humanity evolved on through the years, uh, when the, the survival of your particular village might be, uh, you know, depend on the success of your military, uh, military tactics also use this same tact. Whenever we have a military foray, there's always a back guard, someone that's watching the back of the, of the, of the unit so that uh, you can't be attacked from the rear. So this is, all these adaptations were uh, human beings finding a new way to solve an obvious visual problem in that we can only see straight ahead. So if you fast forward into a, uh, modern day America, especially for many of you here who lived through most of the, uh, the 1900s, one of the big evolutionary changes in the 1900s uh, was the evolution of the automobile. Uh, and if you're driving an automobile, uh, again, if you're uh, on a tractor or out in the farm, no big problem, you're driving this direction, it doesn't matter that you start to street straight ahead. But as we became more civilized and we started to deal with roads and started to deal with traffic, it became critical for us to know what was going on behind us. You can't drive in today's environment uh, just looking straight ahead and not knowing what's behind you. So initially, uh, the, the problem was solved by a simple side view mirror. Some of the cars from the 20s and 30s that you'll see have just a little side view mirror and the driver could learn how to use just that side view mirror to, for an occasional check as to what was happening behind them. Because again, in the 20s, we didn't have super highways. We, we had traffic, but it was minimal. Uh, in today's environment, and having had teenage sons that I had to teach how to drive, I mean, they were great on the back roads, and they were great sort of in the neighborhood. But when you have to take them out uh, on the highway, especially as the parent uh, sitting in a car without uh, operating equipment on my side, so all I could do was uh, scream and holler and sweat, you know, kids trying to merge onto a four-lane highway is enough to give you a heart attack. As an experienced driver, you're looking, and, and they are not paying any bit of attention to where the cars are coming up, and they're trying to merge. They haven't learned yet how to use the mirrors. Uh, it's a frustrating uh, experience until you teach them. You just can't pull out. The other cars aren't going to just give way, especially in Philadelphia. We never give way. Uh, you know, we just crowd you right out. So they had to learn how to use the mirrors if they wanted to go on the highway. And I've noticed as cars evolved, we went from having just a side view mirror to the addition of a rear view mirror. And now virtually every new car has a mirror on each side and in the rear. So most cars today have three-way mirrors. And I have a new uh, Prius, which actually has, uh, when I put it in reverse, there's a camera that lights up and I can see behind me. So I'm thinking humanity is still adapting to an age-old problem in that we can only see straight ahead and we can't see behind us. And we're in a world where it's important to be able to see behind us. 
So uh, human beings have learned a new way to adapt to this.